Hey folks, welcome back to the shop. Frank here. I've got an interesting little project. I've started on it and I decided that uh, because I like, I like the way it works, I would share it with you guys. I've got some more of it <laughs> to, to install. I'll show you how, how to do it. It's, it's, it's pretty interesting. Let me show you what I got and we'll get, get right into it. So these are automated blast gates for dust collection with woodworking, stationary woodworking power tools. So these are four inch, there's three blast gates and three little controllers. Uh, if you're at all familiar with woodworking tools, most large stationary tools, you want to use dust collection to control airborne dust. And that's what these do. The advantage of this particular product, and there are other products, and this is not sponsored. I bought this stuff with my own money. I don't have any connection with this company whatsoever. This is a valve, and it opens and closes to allow the vacuum system to remove dust from your power tool. The advantage of these, and I have had manual blast gates, and I'll show you one of those, and this automates it. This is a sensor which goes on the tool's power cord. When it senses you turn the tool on, it does two things. It turns on the big dust collector, because there's a sensor and a big switch over in the corner that turns on the dust collector and it also opens the blast gate to the tool you're using and all these are addressable so you can have an assortment in your shop and whatever tool you turn on the blast gate for that tool opens so the advantage of having blast gates for each tool is it focuses basically focuses all of the dust collection on the tool you're using. In most systems, if you have, like in my shop, I have eight, probably eight tools that would have, that have dust collection. And if you had them all open at the same time, you know, you wouldn't have enough airflow through any one of them to be effective. So, by having one open at a time, you have the maximum airflow through that particular tool, and it's most effective at collecting the, the sawdust from that tool. Also, it eliminates the need to go turn on the dust collector, the main machine that creates the suction that has the collection bag and filter each time you turn on a tool. This turns the machine on, the dust collector itself on, every time you turn a tool on, and then shuts it off when you turn the tool off. It also opens the particular blast gate for the tool that you are using. All right, so let me show you the difference between a manual blast gate and these automated ones. All right, so this is my shaper. And it has dust collection back here on the back side. And here is a manual blast gate. So to, to allow dust collection, there's a little screw here to hold the gate open. So as you can see, now if, it, if the gate weren't vertical, it might stay open on its own. If it were horizontal, it would stay open on its own. But this is a manual blast gate, and you have to open that, keep it open while you're using the tool, and then close it when you're done with the tool. I have them on my bandsaw. So here's another one. And the bandsaw actually has two. So there's one down here as well for the bottom port, and one up here for the top port. So that tool has two manual blast gates on it. My jointer has another blast gate. So again, you have to open it and then close it when you're done. 
And as you move around the shop using different tools, that becomes a chore. If you leave one open, when you're moving from one tool to another, you don't have effective airflow at the tool you're using. So having the blast gates automated so that when you turn the tool on, the blast gate opens and turns on the dust collector. And then turn, when you turn the tool off, it closes the blast gate and turns off the dust collector. Now I've installed these automated blast gates on three tools. On my two, these are for my two table saws. And for my planer joiner. So there's the blast gate installed. All right, so let's look at the blast gate, and see how it works. All right, so I sh I've installed three. I have three more here. I've decided to expand the installation. I, I originally only bought three because I wanted to see how they work. Pretty happy with them. So I decided to go ahead and buy three more for three more tools. And I actually have a fourth one, which will make seven total when I get done. The other one is still on order. It's actually a six inch diameter blast gate for my big planer. All the tools take four inch duct work with the exception of my big 20 inch planer, which has uh, five and six inch hoses. Let's plug in, this is the power supply for the blast gate. And it plugs in here. Okay, now you can see it closing because it's, it's on close. There it is open. That's in auto. So when you first get them, they're set up to be closed at, by default. And depending on how you address them, they will either be closed or open. The system is designed to have eight different devices on the same channel. And it also has several three or four different channels. So you could have a bunch of these, but the single channel, eight blast gates and eight, eight sensors. So you need a sensor for every blast gate because it attaches to the power cord of the tool and senses current in the cord to turn on, to send a signal to turn the dust collector on and to open the blast gate. And the, the sensor and the blast gate need to be addressed to the same, set to the same address. And addressing is easy, it's just a little dip switch. In here, you set the switches according to a table provided in the manual. So you set it to Channel A, for example, that's the first channel. That's the default, factor default channel. And then once you set to channel A, then the use the switches to set it to one, two, one through eight, whichever one you want. So you program each sensor and each blast gate to the same, the same address on the channel. I currently use, am using channel A, and I have the three blast gates so far set to channels one, two, and three. So I'll start setting these to four, five, and six. And we'll go ahead and install these and see how they work. All right, so it does have an indicator here. It's green, showing it's open, and black, showing it's closed. Now my only complaint about that is it I'm installing these this way so the dust doesn't, in the air, settles on this side rather than on this side. Just 
for convenience sake, but that also means that the indicators are not visible when this is upside down. So I would suggest that the manufacturer make it visible from either, either direction. But minor concern there. All right, let's, let's turn my joiner on and see how the currently installed blast gate operates. Right, so when I turn it on, you'll see um, the dust collector will start. The blast gate is currently closed. It will open. And then when I turn the tool off, the blast gate will close before the dust collector turns off. So you'll see the hose collapse and then relax. So that, op that opened. So it's working. You can feel the airflow through it. Turn it off. Blast gate's closed, which creates suction in the hose. The dust collector's still running. Okay, the dust collector just shut off. So, and you can set the delay time on opening and closing the blast gate. I have it set to operate pretty much right away. All right, so we're going to set this blast gate up. Comes with a manual with the codes for the the addressing system. So by default it's on uh, system address A which is S1 and S2 are off and off. And I don't think you know, if you can see the dip switches in there, I guess you can. So those would be set to the address to address the device. So one and two should be off and off. And that's default. And then I'm going to set this to gate number four, tool address. Well, closure time, two seconds or 50 seconds. When operating in the auto mode, the closure time can be set by means of the dip switch S3 to either 50 seconds or 2 seconds. The 2 second close delay is intended primarily for production test and demonstration purposes. So they want you to let it be open for 50 seconds in order to finish evacuating all of the uh, dust from the machine. And uh, so I think um, I have had it set to two seconds on the other machines. 50 seconds seems like a long time. 15 seconds would be best. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it on two seconds. I can always come back and change it. So for two seconds, it, switch number three should be in the on position. They give you a little pick here with the sensor that you can use to reach in and set the switches. So I'm going to set th number three to on. And then I'm addressing this as device number four, which should be off, off, and on, off, off, and on for the next four switches. Off, off, and on. OK, so that makes this device four. Put the little rubber grommet back in the opening here, if I can get it. Keep the dust out of there. This needs to be set to auto. And then this one. The sensor. Again, the system address is a, so it's off and off. And the tool address is going to be 4, 5, and 6 are going to be off, off, and on. So off, off, and then off, off, 
and on. So that should set that. And again, this has an on and off capability, auto, off and on, so we want it set on auto. All right, that set to auto. So this, this, this d device is addressed. Let's go put it on my joiner. All right, let's see. We're gonna remove this blast gate. I need a screwdriver for the other side. All right, so the blast gate's installed. That's easy enough to do, a couple of hose clamps. The only, the only inconvenient thing about these is that you need two additional 110 volt plugs in order to power these two devices. You have the sensor, which has a USB-C, I'm sorry, USB-A plug on it. And then a little wall wart power supply, which is says 16 volts at 800 milliamps. Let's add this sensor to the power cord. Pretty straightforward. You just run the power cord through here. And this rotates in different positions depending on the size of your power cord. So this is the this is the power cord. So this sensor, when, the pow when it senses power through the cord, it sends two signals. It sends a signal to turn the dust collector on to a central switch there. And it also sends a signal, radio frequency signal, to open the blast gate. 
All right, so that's the sensor, blast gate. Got this short extension cord at, I think I got it at Walmart. It's got three plugs and two USB outlets. So I think I can use this instead of two of these. Now this goes to my, to another uh, circuit which runs my grinders. Alright, so that's the supply. This goes down the row of tool cabinets. That supplies the jointer. That supplies the blast gate. And theoretically, this should power the sensor. Okay. Let's just check and see if everything's working manually. All right, that's off. Let's go to on. Okay, so I, the gate opened and the dust collector started. Okay, the gate closed and the dust collector stopped. So I'm going to put it in auto. All right, let's turn the joiner on. All right, blast gate closed, dust collector turned off. So the blast gate is currently closed. It opens right away, dust collector comes on. closes, dust collector turns off. I finished installing the automated blast gates here on the shaper and I have one on the bandsaw. Now the bottom of the bandsaw still has a manual gate and I, what I need to do is really get a splitter so I don't have to have two gates on one machine. Uh, so I'll do that. And I have one more one more blast gate on order that's I said uh, was is a six inch and that will go here on my planer. Now I have a six inch line, six inch blast gate. Actually that's a five inch blast gate right there. I did order five inch flanges for the six inch blast gate. So I'll install the blast gate here for the planer. All right, and of course this is a cyclone collector, collects 95% of the chips and only the fine dust goes to the, up the and down the pipe to the dust collector. All right, so I got one more to install. That'll give me a total of seven 
dust blast gates. And I have dust collection on this sander. This is a drum sander. Uh, I mean, and it's on top of my plane or just to save floor space. I don't use it very often. So I may just leave that with a manual blast gate and that will leave me with a total of seven and with an extra in case I get another tool. So there we go. They do give you with the, oh, let me show you the switch that turns on the dust collector. So I have it here. This is the IVAC switch. So plugs in the wall here, 220 volt outlet, and then the dust collector plugs into this. You can get these in 120 or 240 volt. This is a 240 volt. With the switch, they give you this set of labels for all your different devices. So your channels are A, B, C, D, so it's four channels, and there's eight devices per channel. And give you a label to put on your dust collector and that sort of thing. Anyway, so I've labeled my blast gates one through six, A1 through A6, We're using these labels. All right, so I've got six automated blast gates installed now on joiner, joiner planer, bandsaw, shaper, table saw, table saw. And this solves a problem that I have always had, which is moving from tool to tool, which you do during any project, opening and closing the blast gates, turning on the dust collector, turning off the dust collector. It's just a hassle. So, you know, having the automated blast gates is a big convenience. There are times when you go up to a tool and you just don't feel like, I mean, you just run a piece like a joiner. I'll put a piece over without turning anything on just uh, because it's uh, a hassle. But with these automated gates, it's, there's no extra motion, you turn a machine on, the gate opens, the, machine, the dust collector powers up and it's working. Okay, so how much does it cost? Each blast gate is about $135. And each sensor, power cord sensor, is about, I think about $65 or something, $70. So you're basically looking at roughly $200 per machine to install the sensor and the automated blast gate. If you need the switch, the switch, 240 volt switch, is another $120. Uh, so you can see it is an investment. How much of that, how much of that uh, makes sense for you is a decision you have to make yourself. Now I will repeat. I have no affiliation with this company. I've never used these before. I've just installed them. I don't have any long-term uh, report to make on them. They seem to work fine. It's a little bit of a hassle because they need two extra 120 volt outlets for each machine. So you're looking at multiple plugs or power strips, which I mean, it's not that big a deal. There's no real investment there, but it is something you need to allow for. Uh, I, I have, you know, I operate tool clusters. I have, you know, four or five tools in a cluster. Where I have a down, a, a dust collection drop coming down to a group of tools. Uh, and it's kind of the way I've set my shop up and it seems to, to work well for me. I think it's not unusual to do that. Uh, so it concentrates all the power in, in a spot. <laughs> so uh, it does create the need for a, a lot of... Um, power strips and uh, triple taps. So uh, be, be aware of that. Uh, 
I will come back in you know a future video and talk about them after I've had some time to use them. It'll probably be, I mean, it would be a six months to a year. I'll come back and talk about them. But right now I like them. They seem to work great. Uh, pretty flexible. If I had more than eight tools, I don't know what I would do. I would need um, maybe a second switch for the dust collector. Um, and wire them in parallel, maybe. I'm not sure how I would do that. Uh, but certainly the system is adaptable to larger shops. I mean, that's why they give you the four ch different channels and eight tools per channel. Um, so, uh, so far, so good. Easy, s easy to install, simple. Um, so I like that. Uh, they are plastic. We'll see how they hold up. So, thanks for watching. Uh, leave me a comment. Tell me, especially if you've used these, tell me what your experience is and tell everybody else what your experience is. I don't have enough experience to give you any guidance one way or another, but um, we'll see over time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.